She needs a date to her best friend's gala. He wants to settle down. Can they get past their hangups to see that they should be together? This is the premise of The Accidental Swipe by me, YM Nelson. This steamy contemporary romance features Jason and Fortune, two people who've given up on love and are urged to use an online dating app to find someone. When they find each other, the attraction is undeniable, but their jaded outlooks on love based on past emotional hurt may keep them from getting together. The Accidental Swipe releases on July 25th, 2023. Go to ymnelson.com for all of the latest details. This is the Nerdy Romantics Podcast, and I'm your host, Y.M. Nelson. In this episode, we talk Star Trek Discovery seasons one through three and i'd like to start off by saying that this episode does contain spoilers of those seasons as well as maybe a few spoilers of star trek picard so if you haven't seen star trek discovery seasons one through three i suggest that you file this one away for now go watch this wonderful series and come back and discuss with us. Hello, Nerdy Romantics. OMG, everybody. Um, if y'all knew, <laughs> if y'all knew what we were talking about before this recording started. Oh, oh but I, I, I have to give you a little hint. We were catching up on Star Trek Discovery and talking Easter eggs and feeling all, I don't know, we were nerding out, but then at the same time, we were like, what did we watch? Because there is so much stuff here. So today's episode is obviously Star Trek Discovery, and we are going to talk about some of the uh, feelings we had about this show, some of the big stuff that we that we liked about the show, and of course some of the cool nerd stuff and we will end up with um, kind of like a rating. So this is going to be a review of seasons one through three. Right now there are four seasons out right now. There is a fifth season planned, I believe, but we are going to talk seasons one through three because as you probably know as fans of the show, this show has a lot of stuff in it. There's a lot as far as storyline, there's a lot as far as action, and there's just a lot to talk about. So let's get into it. We have today Stacy and Jen we're going to first kind of talk about how we felt when we found out that Star Trek Discovery, this show called Star Trek Discovery, was actually going to come on. For a little bit of background, Star Trek Discovery is actually, they say it's about 10 years before the Spock and Kirk Star Trek that you know, the original series. And if you've ever heard about the fact that Klingons and humans didn't like each other once upon a time. This is where it all started with Star Trek Discovery. So Jen, how about, tell us, how did you find this show? We know this is not your first Star Trek episode, but how did you find this show? And what did you think when you heard that there was going to be another um, series in the Star Trek franchise? You know, I've been, um, I wouldn't say that I was a a super, super devoted fan of Star Trek, but I have, I have definitely always been um, very aware of them. And I have, um, and I've watched pretty much everything. 
what I absolutely have always loved about the Star Trek shows is uh, the way that they talk about being able to get along, being able to explore, and just sort of depending on each other and sort of creating this found family on the ship. So when I heard there was another one that's out, and there's there's a few Star Trek iterations that are currently available, not only Picard, but like below decks and um and that kind of stuff that's that's out there so when i heard that there was going to be another one um with discovery i was like all right i'm in and i kind of came in a little blind honestly i didn't i didn't do any research about what it was going to be about or what it was going to entail or or where it was in the timeline even and instead i just sort of came out it was like all right you know show me what you got guys and from the very first episode what i was incredibly impressed with was was that they had had really gone in a whole new direction with a lot of the characters, but they still felt very authentic to the world. I was also extremely impressed with the special effects because it feels like you are watching a movie in every single episode. Everything looks so clean and so real. And so everything from the, you know, the, the, the makeup and the costuming um, that they've done with some of the uh, non non non-human looking characters but yeah, just all the special effects that they've done are so incredibly impressive. That, uh, and the the story is so rich. Oh my God, there's so much that's happening in every single episode that it just it has taken the whole experience of watching that show to a to a whole other level. So I've that's where that's kind of where I found it and and how I came across it. And like I said, I just sort of came in a little blind and was like, all right, Star Trek, let's go to space again. Let's do this. And, um, and I, I think we've been able to take it in this whole brand new direction that also feels so familiar and, and right. Yeah, I agree. It's just, it's almost like the, the good, the good stuff of Star Trek, the reason why I became a Trekkie, it just got 10 times better with this show. Mm -hmm. It it just amped it up really, really. um, Oh my. Yeah. Yeah. Stacy, what did you think when you first heard or when you first found this show? What did you think? Well, initially, I th- did it come out around the same time as Picard or was it a few months different? Something like came around the same time or at least I acknowledged it around the same time. And I was excited about it. At the time, I was more excited about Picard coming out because I just loved Picard at the time. <laughs> I really wasn't you know, really like, oh gosh, I can't wait for Discovery. It was more, I was more interested in Picard at the time uh, because I, I think I started watching the, was it Enterprise with um with the guy, Quantum Leap? I know that's not what he posted, <laughs> but I watched that and I wasn't really in love with that show. So I didn't really have at first high hopes for it because of that. But when I found out who was going to be starring in Discovery, that made a little bit of a difference for me. And that was mainly because the actress who plays um, Michael Burnham in, the, in, in Star Trek Discovery, she was on Walking Dead. And I liked her character there. Oh, she was on Walking Dead? She was on she? Walking Dead. Who was she and on she, Walking Dead? She was not, mm-hmm. like, she wasn't a major major in, like, the earlier seasons, but she became a pretty regular and I want to say important, important, but she was a good, I liked her character there, you know. Like a recurring character. Recurring character, yeah. and being that she was a Black woman there, besides Michonne, Michonne was like the only other Black woman right. that stayed the whole the whole way through. But she and this other character, Lori, both left the same time to start their own, you know, TV shows. I was like, oh gosh, you know, because Lori, Lori's character left in the show like she could come back which she did with her show canceled but how, oh boy. Um, but michael burner's character and what was her name is it sonequa margaret but the person yeah is it sonequa martin green martin okay. green yes but her character left she basically she died she spoiler alert if you want <laughs> if you watch <laughs> um but it's gone it's, you know but at that point her character yeah, died Walking dead is over. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so she would there was no coming back for her it's like if this discovery doesn't do it she got to find another show you know but because it was her i was like okay let me give it a chance i mean i'm not sure how much detail you want me to go into how it, it initially i wasn't i was having the same feeling i had from voyager when i first watched this which was like 
Voyager, you know, finally got a woman captain, they get lost in space. Yeah. Um, I kind of felt the same way initially with this. But when I watched, started watching Discovery, I realized I really liked the show for the show. Right. Picard, I liked Picard, but I liked Picard because of Picard. If, and I only liked it to start really watching If Picard wasn't in it, I'm not even sure I would watch Picard. I mean, I know it's called his name, but it's not. It's so focused on him and the characters are so, the show, I don't know. I just like Discovery and it gives me that old feel for Star Trek. Yeah, Picard is his is his own world, but it's not. It's, it's really about Star, him, but yeah. it's about him. While this one, I love the characters and I love the actress that plays. You know, the main character. I love Michael Burnham, but it still has that Star Trekky Star Trekky feel for me. Yeah, yeah. So I have really enjoyed watching it. After I got off that first hump, that okay, she started a war, and <laughs> after that, yes. Um, she started a war she and then war. she was thrown and in prison. Jail. And I'm like, ran really? with the jail, right? right? In the prison. We like, still- why you got to do that, right? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, great. She started a war. She needed to go. But at the same time, I was like, all this time, we and we still going to jail. So, um, <laughs> right. <laughs> at first, that's why I wasn't as feeling it, but I kept on going. Um, and I do have to admit with Jen, like the themes of Star Trek are really, really there. You know, that mm-hmm. especially once you start watching it like season three, especially when they're trying to get the Federation back on track, they yeah. do talk about the whole meaning of it was exploration. It was meeting new civilizations, new groups of people, joining together, helping each other out for no right. other reason than to make this universe, this galaxy, a better and more cohesive place and that's just it's awesome i really have enjoyed watching these over again now it's like oh gosh i really did enjoy this <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> and so you know like i've been watching a lot of it this week just to like trying to catch up and everything and once i started watching it's like oh my gosh so much happened <laughs> in each 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 season multiple storylines but at the same time they did go together it, even though when we were trying to talk about it it seemed like they weren't. it was really and I do like those Easter days that we saw and I'll stop for now but I really I will I really enjoyed watching seasons one through three it brought back that whole you know Star Trek feel for me and I don't want to go into much detail on anything else there are certain things I like oh my gosh the evolution of the Klingon look the, um, yes you that, know you you know we're gonna go into that right you know we're yeah, gonna so go I'm into like that. i don't want to go anymore but my <laughs> overall thoughts and feels of it is i really i'm glad that we decided to go um and watch um star trek discovery yeah yeah if you don't know star trek discovery has been out since i think about 2017 and so that was like years ago and we just kind of we kind of rediscovered discovery in a sense <laughs> to get ready for this podcast. Um, I didn't have a podcast in 2017, so I didn't have a chance to talk about it. But also, I don't think I was really into it in 2017. I do remember, and do y'all remember if, um, didn't like a, an episode or two episodes of this actually come on regular TV? I feel okay. like, so An episode this, or two of yeah. this came on regular TV. It was on CBS. Yeah. Well, it was on CBS. Because yeah. weren't they the trying- episode was broadcast on CBS. I went and looked it up because I, yeah. because I was curious about that too. And it, it was, it did up release on CBS. And then, mm-hmm. and then it was moved to the CBS All Access. Yes. Which is now the Paramount. Yeah. Paramount Plus. Paramount. And, Paramount and. Plus. Yeah, and if and if I'm kind of looking back at it, I'm thinking I'm thinking at the around at the same time there were a, a few shows on CBS that they were either introducing or that or had spun off The Good Fight being one of those shows that was a spin-off of The Good Wife, the long-running show um with mm-hmm. uh Juliana Margulies. And what they were trying to do is they were trying to start up their streaming service. <laughs> That's what that was about. If it, you yeah. know, if you're, if I'm looking at it and thinking about it in those terms, 
a lot of those shows came out. And I think, Stacey, I think that's why you remember Picard kind of coming out at the same time. It it came out, I think, a, a season later or a year later. I think I think um, Discovery has, like, it may have two seasons on Picard, but they they did the same thing with Picard. They, uh, if if I remember correctly, they they gave us one episode on CBS, and then they put the rest of them on CBS All Access. <laughs> and so, you know, they said, you know, you got to go out there and look at it on CBS All Access. And unlike some of the other major networks that have like half of their shows are free or whatever, none of the shows on CBS All Access, as far as I can remember, were free. But yeah, I, I it was kind of a push to get people to go out to the streaming service. The reason why I'm kind of focusing on this, because that's how I got into Star Trek Discovery. That's how I entered into it. And I feel some kind of way about how you're trying to treat me right now with the, <laughs> let me put the good stuff, let me dangle this bait in front of you, and then we're going to put it on, on a page streaming, you know, I, you know, I, I, I'm feeling some kind of way about that, um, especially when you have the main character, I mean, we know that Michael Burnham, played by Sonequa Martin-Green, we know that she's the main character, she's like the Picard here, you know, um, she's the one that we follow. And for yeah. her to be the one that we follow, it was almost like that kind of watershed moment that, you know, Stacy had with, with Janeway. <laughs> we finally got a woman <laughs> heading up stuff. And so I feel like, you know, we finally got a black woman heading up stuff, you know, and, and I was, I was, I was watching because of that. I will say, though, when I first, mm -hmm. you know, heard about it and I first, you know, first kind of got into it, that was what hooked me. But I really did not want to like this show. And part of the reason I didn't want to like this show is how I became a Trekkie in the first place. I had never watched and I still only watched a few episodes of the original series, the Kirk, Spock um you know, Sulu, Uhura, you know, that cast, um, which that's only three seasons long, y'all. <laughs> I can't believe I haven't watched, <laughs> haven't watched but a few of these episodes, but I do have a total appreciation for, you know, that whole cast. Total appreciation, total respect for it. It's canon. Um, really, I got introduced to that cast through the movies, which we talked about in Picard, but because it's, it's before TNG, which that's my sweet spot. Star Trek, The Next Generation with Picard and Riker and Deanna Troy. Mm -hmm. um, hey, y'all, by the way, I know this is like totally off, <laughs> totally off subject, y'all. But did y'all know this? Speaking of Black women in Star Trek, did y'all know that um, Star Trek, The Next Generation they were going to cancel it after the first season. And Whoopi Goldberg said she wanted to be on the show because she was like, I really want to yeah. do a okay. science fiction type of show. And, you know, um, Nichelle Nichols was like, you know, a big inspiration, of course, uh, for her, um, like she was for a lot of, a lot of, especially black women back in the day. And so Whoopi Goldberg pretty much saved that show for y'all, for us. Isn't that I didn't know about what we go about saving the show. I do know that it was clay, came close to cancel on the first season, though. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it, but, that's all right. She wanted to be yeah. on the sh she wanted to be on the show, and I kind of thought about it. And I and I'm actually in that I'm actually in that um you know where I'm watching it. I, I'm watching again. The season has started over again, y'all. Uh, I told I've I've told y'all on sep on a couple of episodes that. I watched the uh, TNG and Voyager and DS9. I watched them on repeat every weeknight because not they're they're on like white noise in my house, <laughs> um, and um, they've kind of repeated and they're back in season one. And I'm you know I'm just kind of looking. I'm kind of waiting to see <laughs> when Guinan is going to show up. <laughs> now that I know this, I'm just like. 
oh, she, you know, when is she going to show up, you know? And so, I, you know, it's like I have this new knowledge and I'm looking at it in a different way. Sorry, that was just an aside, y'all. In a way, they say in a way she saved the show because they were going to cancel it after the first season and she said she wanted to be on it. So she was on it and they got great ratings. And so they kept her on there Um, because she's Whoopi Goldberg, you know? And at the time, I mean, we're like, yeah, Riker and Picard or whatever, but Whoopi Goldberg is is a star by that point, right? She's yeah, didn't she at that point done Ghost and everything? Yes. So yes. she's a movie star. A and movie star. That little show. Yes, <laughs> yes. She was big time by that point. That's kind of where my sweet, sweet spot is, is I know TNG and beyond, right? Mm-hmm. I don't really know about those times when the Klingons and Federation were fighting. I don't remember that. You know, that's that, mm-hmm. that's old school stuff to me. And so I really didn't want to like it. And then when they did this marketing thing by putting it on CBS All Access, I said, okay, so you're going to put a show with a Black woman behind a paywall where people can't <laughs> access it. That also made me a little upset. <laughs> I had to get behind that paywall. <laughs> and I was like, you know, I, I'm going to invest in this for, for a little while. And, and so they hooked me. Because after this, that first season and the way they did that, Jen, you're totally right about the level of like the CGI, the level of, mm-hmm. um, you know, the production level, you know, Stacy with the story, the, the, all the complex story they have going on. It is. That's, that's this, what was that's so why you have to have a paywall because it costs so much to do <laughs> They said that's why they have a behind a paywall. But Jim, what were you saying? I was, well, I was going to say, you know, <laughs> there was a time when, you know, when you had like the 300 cable channels, right? Yeah. And mm-hmm. the stuff on those cable channels was, a lot of it wasn't that great. Nope. You know, so every once in a while you'd get like a superstar, but most of the stuff that they were creating that was going straight to paid cable or basic cable type shows were just, they weren't that great. They weren't spending a lot of money on them. The writing was very dry. And you were like, mm, well, well, whatever. And that's what I was worried about with yeah. this show. Yeah. That they were going to cheap out on it because it was going on to the streaming service. And they didn't think there were going to be a lot of a lot of viewers. And I mean, that would be a self-fulfilling prophecy, I guess, right? If you yeah. put crappy shows and then you're going to charge me for them, why would I pay for crappy shows? Right. So that's something that it's a totally different way that the streaming services have come about providing value to, to the, um, to the fans is that, you know, they could have, they could have done a crappy, you know, not so great version of it and put it out, um, which is what they used to do on, like I said, on the, on the basic cable, but they threw a bunch of money at this. Yes. And every, every penny they spent is on that screen. You have amazing actors like really amazing actors and and just real heartfelt storylines and just real you know there's there's things to celebrate and there's tragedy and there's excellent science yes nerdy nerdy person over here you know when they start going into the into the different the science discussions and I know like a lot of the stuff isn't really (laughs) I know it's made up but even the way that they talk about it makes you think oh yeah we can totally do that that right. sounds plausible. Why wouldn't we? And, but not only do they talk about it where it's like, yeah, we can totally do this. They are excited about it. They are nerding out about it. Like first yeah. season when they figure out that whole spore drive yes. and they are talking about that spore drive and they are just totally geeked out about it. And it makes you excited about it too. And it's like, I don't know what grade I got in biology, but I am down to work on a spore drive. <laughs> Right? Yes. They, they totally leverage that. But then, and here's the other thing that they've done really well is that, is that, okay, so we, we spend an episode and we nerd out on the spore drive or, or what have you. And sometimes that type of information would kind of be forgotten or glossed over in future episodes. And that's not what they do here. No. There are some decisions mm-hmm. that are made kind of like middle, we'll call it middle of season three, when uh, there's like an entity that's like trying to take over things. And they realize that what's his name has, has all this knowledge of the spore drive. They're like, we have to get you far away from here because this, this Mm -hmm. technology, this knowledge 
is so rare, literally in the universe, it is so rare that um, we cannot allow this to fall into the wrong hands, which means that you cannot fall into the wrong hands. It's it's honestly like it's kind of gut wrenching because he's he's taken without consent. You know, yeah. they're like, right, don't do this to me. And yet they do it to him anyway. And there's I don't know how deep we want to go into the spoilers here, but, you know, there it's spoil away. Spoil away. <laughs> yeah, because his, his husband is in danger. Yes. And they're like, yeah, we're going to but we're going to put you basically on the other side of the universe anyway, because even though your husband is in danger and you might be somebody that could save him, but it's more important. Um, and you know, in the grand scheme of things that we protect the knowledge of the spore drive. And that's why mm-hmm. we're going to do this to you. And it's just heart wrenching to watch him be like put in that bubble thing and like zipped away. And you're like, what, yeah. what are you doing? Yeah. Right. You understand it on like both sides, right. You understand the logic here, but it's, I really appreciated that they that they have been able to kind of pull that not just that the spore drive was was cool in one episode or two episodes, but that it actually impacted how the storyline ran in the future too. So yeah, because they did that several times with the spore drive about when they first when they trying to find the you know how to use the spore drive mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that monster which was what is it um a, a gorm gorman Ga- gormagander <laughs> the one that <laughs> powered it. Yes. Yeah, a gormagander. Okay, but it's yeah. actually based on something here. Tardigrad? Tarda? Yes. Microscope, that little microscope. I know it when I see it because it looks just like it on the show, but whole lot yarder. But when they show that kind of using that and how it affected using that instead of him, the, the guy. Right. To do it and have to make a choice about that. But also when um, Tilly and her imaginary friend, who wasn't so imaginary. <laughs> right. How all that came into play, but how that one thing, this one thing they created has affected multiple beings. Should we still do this if we're actually uh, basically abusing an animal to get across time right. and space, you know? Right in which they did for a while there or that they're going through this mycelium network universe network yeah. whatever was going through somebody else's backyard it was literally right going through somebody else's backyard and i know they're probably like are you kidding you just came through again you know there is so much going on and that one thing about the about you would think like like jen said one thing it became multiple episodes which brought back people that were we thought were gone i really right like how they don't just something that you use here comes met back and makes it more important and makes those people involved in that also in a way more important and more personable so i do think kind of going back to the who was the i believe like i said you were talking about the um openly gay relationship yes um just seeing their relationship and the top yeah with just kind of their loss and then found and then separated again and how deeply moving they made it yes which you not just hey there's a gay there's a, look at a gay couple in the court they actually <laughs> right. talk about their relationship exactly and what it means to them yeah um exactly it, it's it's normalizing they on yeah. this on this show even though i feel like star trek kind of does this in it, it in its own way, it's it's gotten better and better and better normalizing basically the way we think the world should be. <laughs> people getting along and you know, people of different races coming together and things like that. This show kind of took it above and beyond as far as normalizing what we see instead of making up making it a point it's like they're an openly gay couple we know that let's move on this is how a real couple with real problems acts it doesn't matter they're both guys they're a real couple this is how real couples act and so you get that normalization kind of thing going on there which i really love about this show i'm sorry stacy i didn't mean to take that over but (laughs) Yeah, let's talk about that a little bit more. What did we think about kind of some of the things here, I would say that have been normalized or some of the things that we don't see on other shows, some social things that actually, you know, come to mind that we're like, yay, Star Trek Discovery. Thank you. And let's keep watching. Um, You know, for me, um, of course, the openly gay couple, that definitely, you know, struck a chord here with me. For me, the biggest chord that was struck with is, you know, is Michael. The fact that her name's Michael, she's a girl. (laughs) Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> and you know she's kind of running things um i like that but yeah let's let's talk a little bit more about chime in what what do y'all think about any of this stuff that i've just said one of the things at least i liked was that also they had it about their um the couples their non-binary child that they've kind of adopted so oh, yeah that was different Yes. Um, which is, you know, you normally see, again, you rarely see about having a child in a relationship and all this in a really not in that many environments. Unless I'm just trying to think about how many that we actually see that are really normalized and yeah, you care, you know, really do care about. And they, well, I mean, I, mean, I just really liked that part of it. I also liked the fact that Michael's relationship with Spock we see that later on you know her relationship with Spock right and how she handled her whole relationship in youth with Spock and how basically she kind of almost destroyed him as a child thinking that if she pushes him away it will protect him but that ended up making it kind of worse for him right um but she was a child doing that and I do I'm gonna have to be like oh I love Spock with the um, with the beard um yes! beard, beard made everybody <laughs> better I'm just yes it does. <laughs> Uh, unless, unless you got one of those unless you got one of those like zz top looking things no but no, that but beard I mean, that he has is like oh beard, no the, her her um ash tyler her love interest in the first one i like that she had a love interest too yeah um his look when he had the beard i was like you still look good. I, I love you still <laughs> <laughs> Right. Um, I love you still. still I love but, um, that whole relationship was so complicated. I mean, I don't, again, this would be spoilers, but we find out that he really isn't who he says he is, but he doesn't know he isn't what he says. Right, exactly. He is. He, it's, and, it's, it's complicated to a big level. Very yeah, that, that's more than just Facebook. It's complicated. Yeah, it's is, really, it's complicated. really complicated. <laughs> but I do like the fact that she has a love because a lot of times we don't see that a love interest that isn't like Picard. You never saw him had a love. Barely ever saw him anything. Yeah. And Captain Kirk, I already told him he has space herpes. I mean, it's just <laughs> he slept with anything and not everything, and, which is weird because it's like he slept with it, but it was still fe everybody who looks female. So he was sleep with me. Exactly. But um, but no, you know. And then I'm thinking about Deep Space Nine. He didn't really he's near the end he had a relationship, but again, it was more they got married. It all kind of felt along the same kind of lines, but you never really saw a whole lot of courtship, especially from the female kind of perspective of it. I mean, I really enjoyed that. Cause she's had if you keep watching it, she has two love interests as we go along and see mm -hmm. both of them very different but both i really like because a lot of times you see somebody and they leave one person or something happens and they have another one's like i liked the other one but i was like i like them both i really did and i'm glad yeah, you, had right. to go, you know <laughs> right um, okay i like i liked them both but oh shoot what's his name that shows booker, up in season three Cleveland? the huh? guy in season three though Cleveland Booker. Special. Yes. Or Cleveland, Cleveland Book. Book or something like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Book. 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 Yeah. They call him Book. Yeah. He's an upgrade. I'm just going to say. <laughs> I, have to, I have to agree with that because the Good other man. one had, had yeah. how many issues going back to be like, okay, he got a lot going. He got a baggage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cleveland is an upgrade. I do agree with that. Oh, man. Yes, he is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I, I'm sorry, that actor, David Ayala. Um, yeah, he's a muse in, in a future <laughs> novel of mine. Um, <laughs> but that's a whole nother can of worms. But you're right. Yes, he's an upgrade in the fact that, you know, he has his stuff together. She's a mess by the time she meets him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, she is straight messy, but he gets her all together. <laughs> <laughs> gets her together enough where she can she can get a little promotion there, you know, mm -hmm. without being without spoiling too much, even though I'm I am saying there are spoilers. He's he's a definite, he's a definite upgrade in that he's got his stuff together pretty much, you know, mm -hmm. when they first meet. And, and I love that about about him to be honest i'm going to say it and yes this is surface level considering we just talked about normalization but um my heart got really giddy to the fact that she had both of her love interests were people of color mm. when do we see that on this type of show mm -hmm. 
Cleveland Booker is definitely, and he's a black man. So this is black love here, and I'm and I'm mm-hmm. all for that. Thank you. Um, I, I'm all about that. And so, yes, that's just a side for me, but but it's a good thing because we don't see that on this type of show. And I'm and when I say this type of show, I don't mean a science fiction show. I mean a major drama because this is what this show is y'all it's a major drama right Mm -hmm. it yeah for sure to me to me it could stand up to a you know it could stand up to an er it could stand up to a 30 something it could stand up to you know any of these kind of major shows where they're going through and having emotion it just yeah it just happens in space (laughs) <laughs> you know we don't see that a lot you know if we get one person of color on on those shows it's a it's a victory and then it's not really normalized it's almost like there's got to be at least one episode where they're having some kind of race relations issue or or you know racist grandma comes to thanksgiving dinner and <laughs> <laughs> and it's always something going on you know you know it's all it's always an issue but here it's not and it, it's it's totally normalized and I love that and mm-hmm. and I kind of before we get too far away from it I do want to kind of go back to Stacy what you were saying about the kid that Stanton and um and his husband I can't remember what his name is um I'm looking at the cast list it says Hugh Hugh yes yes their child it was it was so interesting because I knew something I knew at some point once we found out because their child is a trill well not a trill but their child was in love with a trill the trill died and so they got the um Symbiont. Symbiont. Yes, yes, that's it. So Mm -hmm. they got the symbiont and I I knew once we met, there was going to be a storyline there, but I love how there was and there wasn't a storyline. You know, Mm -hmm. it was just at one point, um, at one point Stanton said, yeah, she's doing well or such, 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 such. They said, I use them, you know, they, them pronouns, right? And they were like, Mm -hmm. okay, all right. And then everybody and everybody just kind of adopted it. And it's like, I really wish this would, you know, this, this could happen in real life, you know, instead of a parent being like, oh my gosh, why do I have to use they, them pronouns? What's wrong with this child? And da, da, da. and then other people getting in their heads and then politics, it's just, I want to use they, them pronouns. And they were like, okay, all right. So, you know, they did, da, 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 and, and, they, and they just kept on going with life. Mm-hmm. It was, it, it was, was easy. Yes. Yes. Mm. Yes. It was easy. And that's what it should be. It should be easy. It's easy and respectful. It's mm-hmm. anyway, whatever. <laughs> I want to be called YM on <laughs> Just call me YM. I mean, you know. Those are my initials. But it's like, you know, what is that going to take away from you? Absolutely nothing. What did that take away from the show? Absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. Right? Because we had several episodes where that didn't come into play. That was in like the middle of season three. They said that they wanted to be called they, them, you know, it's, it, and, and things just kind of went on, (laughs) you know? My thing is, if you're a trill, aren't you they, them anyway? To me, at some point, you know. Okay, I hear what you're saying. I do. Yeah, because yeah, then I don't. It's they because they're a symbiote and they have like all these other lives inside of them, so they are male, female, um, anything. Yeah, so they're so they're that. But I don't know. I felt like this was. I I don't feel like that the other (laughs) character, the other like symbiotes, sort of saw themselves that way. They didn't see Mm. themselves. They did. Mm -mm. Um, they thought that they 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 seem to have been more like well whoever is the host is the host and it's not um um yeah it just wasn't so it wasn't it didn't feel like it was supposed to have been like they were supposed to think of themselves as as they or them or he or she and it was really up to the um identity of the of the host that Mm -hmm. had that sort of contained all of them and contained all their knowledge and I thought that was wonderfully done the way that they talk about how those symbiotes exist inside and and work together and Mm -hmm. don't they they bring 
because because there's a storyline where Trill is struggling to connect because that's one of the things with their no not Trill what's their name their name is Trill they're uh, from no so they're from Trill, Trill. Trill. Um, is there, their sorry. name is Enduri 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 and Enduri I think that's right Enduri yeah so where Enduri is they they need the expertise of one of of somebody that was in in had a previous life and was was part of the symbiote and they the enduri cannot speak to them and that's a whole like that's a whole storyline about how they cannot speak to them and how they are right. struggling with this whole process and and you felt for them because they they so wanted to get it right mm-hmm. and they're supposed to be this special entity and they they didn't feel that special and it was just i just thought it was really well done they made that character who's um who's not the star of the show into uh into somebody who's very sympathetic and very you can you can empathize with them and the way that they're feeling even though you know i'm not a symbiote <laughs> You know, there's, but there's so much depth to that one character and they have, that's what I love about the storytelling in this series is that they have brought so much depth to a character that is, who, who has so little screen time and that has a storyline that is so meaningful and makes the whole, like the whole experience of watching the show richer, even though they're not like the, Mm -hmm. they're not the one holding the phaser most of the time. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But they do mention in there that even before they, because I've been watching and it, the the character does mention that even before I before the symbiote was in me, I felt like being called them they before that. So it had nothing to do yes. with that. Yes, and exactly. I really like the fact that they they said it that it was part of their identity, not this alien creature inside of its identity to cause that. So I liked it that they did that. Yeah. Um one other, oh gosh, while you were talking, I was thinking about one other thing. We gotta talk about my the fave, my favorite sexiest fish man alive, Doug Jones. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> yes. I was waiting for this, right? So, he's played he plays so many characters that I just love. You know, he's all heavily costumed and you know, he's always in everything. Yeah. In I, everything. It, yes. I'm wondering if if he like prefers that way. Well, I've heard, I've watched like an interview he did about it, and like he would have liked to have seen real screen time as his real face. Oh, he would. Um, he instead would? Okay. for certain things, I think what was it? Um, something he talked about it was um or the he because he did not say he complained about it, but when he was in Hellboy, he plays the um oh I forgot the name of the character, but it's again like a merman character. Yeah. But later on, they use the voice of the guy who plays Niles on Frasier. Right. And he was like, but I was my body and all that. <laughs> you know, he's played that, and he also did um what was the water? Yeah. The uh, was, the the color, color no, it wasn't the color Whatever, of the, water. The love it was story, the something. The Merman love story. Yes, yes, but, yes. The something but he's of all, water. Yes. That and Hocus Pocus one and two. Yes. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> there's just so much that he's played in that I've enjoyed his character, and then he's Saru. Um, in this one again, he's under a whole lot of makeup, but we do get to see him as a human. Yes. Which I gotta admit, I like. I like the makeup, but. <laughs> but I mean, I said nothing's wrong with it, but it that, the mystery's gone. That that was but, kind of why I was like, has he ever said that he prefers that? Because it seems like he was so much comfortable in his whole Saru thing. And then <laughs> when he wasn't, you know, when he was just himself or when he was human, I guess, because he wasn't himself, he's still playing a character, but yeah, uh, but I th- Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. It, it just seemed like he was a, a little bit on the uncomfortable side. It, again, this just may be his brilliant acting because he's kind of supposed yeah. to be a little uncomfortable in that, in those scenes. So I, every time he comes on, I was like, oh my gosh, Doug Jones is going to be here. Who's he going to play? Yeah. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> <laughs> I just love the way he moves. I mean, he plays those roles, whatever role he's in. We he has, he plays that so well. I mean, yes. he's there with um, the shape of water, not shape, the color okay. of water. Yeah, the shape of water. You know, as Gollum. I mean, to me, he's almost better than. I mean, you know, the guy who plays Gollum. You know, and he, you Andy know, does, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, he's to me be- better than that in, in some ways. But both of them are great movement and care. You know, you yeah. you feel the um the character just by the way he moves because when he does that move and he's on some i don't know hoofs or whatever how he gets they get you know you know basically heel uh heel is high heel shoes 
Yes. <laughs> and he does that. No cans. You're right. No cans going back. You know, right. No going, cans going like, back. And it's like, oh my God. He walks so smooth with it. I'm like, go yes. ahead. And it was funny because he was like, you know, when he was human, he was like, I feel weird. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, it seems like you do feel like you're out of character. Mm. But yeah, it's, it, it seemed like it's so effortless. And it's like, now you know. This is not effortless, <laughs> but he's good. He is yes. he's just good at what he does. And his character, I love the um the arc of his character because what his people were, right? Which were basically, and in two, like in in both both of this, I was like this, <laughs> this universe and the pair, the um, both universes. They were both lower on the food chain, yeah. In a way, I mean, right. literally lower on the food chain, right? Um, the both literal both food those. chain, food you know? chain. and like he left his whole community because he didn't want to die like everybody else did, and you know, and he managed to go be the only person of his species to to be in 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 the federation managed to get that high up being the only one and he came from a, a community or group that was not technology advanced the other group that was on that planet was and he used mm-hmm. them to contact but he but his yep. people were not technology advanced but he got to that point and did all these languages i mean he was just superb superb Amazing. but having that fear because that his whole their his whole culture was based around fear exactly and the little having a little ganglia thing that oh the subconsciously waggling around like oh my gosh there's something and he was like their their whole he was like alarm system right there just a walking talk <laughs> right <alarm> exactly <laughs> um <laughs> and then him discovering that oh my gosh they were apex predators the whole time right Spoiler, the right. whole time yeah <laughs> but, but uh, but just because, but also you just show that how a community or society can be totally brainwashed into believing something that they really weren't. Yeah. And granted, the other group did it because they were being slaughtered. And so they did it to protect themselves. Exactly. But at the same time, you saw how his people were so scared, so low, and killing themselves off, or, you know, once they get to that point that right. they should have jumped over, that they were brainwashed believing this is a bad I thing. about that. Yes. Yes. And not going to the next level. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And it's just, and how he just rediscovered, like, this is the first time I've ever not felt fear. And I was like, my God, you know, just that it, whole thing, that whole arc for him. And seeing him yeah. change from somebody less, not saying he was meek, to begin with because he wasn't necessarily meek but again every day he faced his fears because they were a fearful race of people but he faced it every day to accomplish that until he wasn't anymore and i hope oh i loved his character every time he came on i was like (laughs) sir yeah (laughs) i'm gonna say this and then i'm gonna get off of this but it's kind of a parallel of kind of seeing what oppressors can do to oppress people Mm mm-hmm and why that just doesn't make logical sense, but it's really a it's really a power thing. And it was mm-hmm. and 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 they were just trying to oppress them because they were the apex predator. In the, they were the ones who and they were just trying to oppress them. You know, mm-hmm. even when Saru, you know, had that arc and owned his power and everything like that. It wasn't like he went back and tried to slaughter all those people. So it's really a fear on the other side. That's really what mm-hmm. that's about. They're just trying to project it onto someone else. You know, mm-hmm. that's really what oppression is all about. It's all about fear. And yeah. I'm just going to leave that there because, <laughs> because that's what Star Trek can do to you. You know, it can make you actually think about real life, which is <laughs> what the whole point of it is. But I do want to leave that there because, you know, you mentioned Saru and you mentioned costuming and you mentioned um, the fact that, you know, of course he's an alien get up and make up and everything like that. And I want to talk about y'all, the Klingons in hmm. the first season and the amazing job with the costuming there and the makeup there and just their look. I was kind of concerned about that because, you know, in TOS, you know, in the, in the triple episode, you <clears throat> in TOS, the original series, this is one of the few episodes that I've seen, y'all. 
Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> but in the Tribble episode, there are Klingons in the Tribble episode. They're actually the same Klingons in DS9. Um, the Klingons that go and try to fight the albino in DS9. I don't know if y'all remember that episode. Jadzia is Curzon, and they all have a K name. Kang, Koloff, and I can't remember the other one. But um, but anyway, those are the same Klingons in TOS in that triple episode that there are in DS9 when they go and fight the albino. Mm -hmm. You know, in the first season, there's the albino right there. And I'm wondering, is this the same, like, you know, albino that they were trying to fight in DS9? <laughs> is this the same one that they were, you know, talking about? We've been hunting this guy for 80 years and, da -da 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 and all this other kind of stuff. You know, you just kind of wonder how much did they kind of connect. But what isn't connected is the way that Klingons have looked throughout the series. Because in that very first episode or the TOS episode, Klingons look just like humans. They just have these beards. And in fact, they're, they kind of make you think that they're like Russians. Okay. You, okay. The original Star Trek. The original um, Star Trek. Yeah. That, oh, okay, I do remember. I didn't, I didn't see the original Star Trek, but I do remember Star Trek The Next Generation where they go back in time. Yeah, that's DS9. That's DS9. They go back in time. That's the episode, the triple episode. So, because they, they go, go back, back in time. 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 As, well, because I was it Worf that goes, somebody goes back that's from their time. He says, What happened to y'all? He's yeah, like, I don't want to talk that, about it. That was when, remember, um, like halfway through DS9, the DS9 series, Worf was on DS9 because oh, okay. So, okay. I remember thought him was, I thought and Martok were him and okay. Martok or whatever and then he got married to Judd Zia and everything that was DS9 this is the exact same episode I'm talking about okay and yeah that's the Tribble episode and every time they talk about Tribbles that's the episode um so they they merged the TOS um footage with them they they green screened them in that but yes, that's why he says that because they're Klingons and they, mm -hmm. and don't you get that kind of feel like they're supposed to be kind of Russian? Yeah, <laughs> like, I was at the time. I'm sure they were supposed to live, you know. You know, but it's a, it's, a, right. it's a different time. It's the late 60s. What, what was that? Yeah, it's like, war? okay, we're going to have the war, war. And, I mean, the war Cuban race. Missile Crisis. Yeah. It's yeah. That time. So we're going to have that. Yeah. Yeah, but, but then you notice not just there, and then when you come forward and you go to the Star Trek movies and mm -hmm. you see the Klingons there, yeah, and then they come here, and I'm like, can we pick a line? How we <laughs> right? How these Klingons supposed to be? What's <laughs> causing the change in every <laughs> everything? But you at know. least they're somewhat similar, but. It's funny. I was like, Klingons really evolving here. <laughs> what they like, evolved what? backwards because that's yeah, supposed to be before TOS. Change. <laughs> and then they didn't have initially any hair. And I was like, so what's up with that? <laughs> right, right. It was like, and I, but I think, but y'all, do y'all not think that that was like a, a style choice thing? It was like, like, like they were I, trying to say that it was a fashion thing because in the first part, um, they were like, we don't want to have hair. But in the second, um, or at the end, I guess that's the end of the first season. These seasons are so long. Um, yeah. It's at the end of the first season where they were like, oh, yeah, we're all growing hair. Like, hair is- Yeah, we're growing back. our hair back. <laughs> right. I think it would have something to do with, with being at war or peace or something like that. Because yeah. they- did, she did mention they did mention about yeah hey, you know the Klingons have been growing their hair back he's like yeah so 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 and I was like yeah they did when you see him like oh gosh they finally got some hair back this is the Klingons I kind of remember <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> well I will say though the the makeup even though the the evolution is all messed up the makeup and the way they actually portrayed the Klingon and actually had them speak in their language, which we all, which we know as Trekkies is an actual language. Like they made Klingon is an actual language. They made it up. It, 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 it has all the markers of actually being a language. So they had them speaking in their language and the way they had them made. Jen, tell me what you thought, because I know Stacey's talking about evolution. But what do you think about the way they look in Discovery or or even just 
the whole Klingon equation in season one? The evolution of Klingons from, you know, them being the bad guys to being on the, you know, in, in the next generation, they were on the bridge, a part of things. And then we've got all this like time travel that's happening, right? Oh. And what I appreciate about about them is that I feel like in a lot of ways, they've maintained their, like their cultural identity, we'll call it. Yes. Where, uh, you know, what they're the way what they value has kind of stayed consistent. But the original series, they were just on opposite ends, right? They they um, they didn't see how they could uh, be a part of of the Federation. The Federation was didn't see how they could be a part of things. And so I appreciated that evolution when they in the next generation when they had come to some sort of agreement and they were um, and they were going to be a part of the of the Federation. So I appreciated that. So then we get into Discovery. And in Discovery, we kind of have this opportunity to go back and forth in their history and in and in who they are and sort of see them see them a few different ways. I think that might be the I think it's the only species that we really see from that many perspectives. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, Vulcans, Mm -hmm. certainly the Vulcans. The Vulcans have kind of stayed on the side of the Federation, I think, for the most part. And then Well, they were the first contact. They were the first contact contact. as well. And so you just kind of feel like there's, I think it's, I think it's so interesting the way that they have played that out, the way that they have really used that species to show so many different sides of, of how like negotiations and how relationships can evolve over time. You know, you see the the friendships that they have on, on a one-to-one basis, but you also see them when they have had when you know when the Klingons have sort of gotten to gotten on the uh, on the opposite side of whatever the Federation wanted, and how that would affect an individual um, personally, and yeah, so that's I don't know I think that I think that as a species they've been used very really effectively to show that you can still be true to your cultural identity and also affected and disagree with what um, with what sort of the leaders of your group are are doing. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I do have to agree with that because I mean when I talk about the evolution of their look again I think those Klingons and the Vulcans are like the two and for the longest time major alien species that humans or federation have been um, interacting with the longest time mm-hmm. and we do see and it, to me a lot of times the Vulcans are seen almost holier than now you know just yeah right I mean, in a lot of ways ho- you know beyond yes. reproach on everything but with the Klingons we do see that they are a group of people who are very clan oriented, you know, group oriented, warmongering they seem, but they do have honor and and a code, you know, their code. But and they've always they yeah, I have to agree with Jen. They do they do stay with they do stay adhere to their whole their whole culture the whole time through in Star Trek, all the Star Treks. I mean, I don't really didn't really watch the original one, but in all of them they have stayed that way. And it was nice to see well not not nice, but it, to see how the war started, because they talk about that in the next generation. Yeah. But how that ended, I was like, did it really end at that point? Or did they have another skirmish? I know war came into being. Because, war. yeah, he was a kid and they he were. He was a kid and they were. But, um, but weren't they, but they were fighting Romulans. They were you fighting got, Romulans. They, they, that was remember that's it. Never mind. Romulans. Never mind. Yeah. Once you said that, I was like, that wasn't the stuff. That was um, Romulans. And yeah. being that the a Federation uh, a starship intervened, that at least brought them even closer together, the Klingons and the Federation. Exactly. Because they can't. Thank you for that reminder. I need somebody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> again, I, I again white noise, white noise. Yeah. I watch it every day. It, yeah, it did. It it brought them closer because that peace that they had during Kirk's time and kind of what we see here at the end of Discovery is. Mm-hmm just kind of a tenuous piece because again these are Klingons all right mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like you know if you do one thing if you do, you know you mess with their honor they gonna fight you don't care what mm-hmm. what they got going on as far <laughs> as a treaty are you kidding me <laughs> it was tenuous but then when they had that common enemy the Romulans and TNG that's when it kind of you know it came together and you know they do say on TNG you know even though Worf is on the bridge and 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 we love that about you know the fact that he's on the bridge he's the only Klingon in Starfleet at the time so you know (laughs) we see on TNG Worf being a only Klingon in Starfleet we see on DS9 one Ferengi in Starfleet 
I don't know why these names are escaping me right now, you know, and, and then here on Discovery, um, we've got the first Kelpian in Starfleet. And I just think it's so cool. It, it, it just becomes more and more inclusive over the years, right? Over yes. the series, it becomes more and more inclusive. And, you know, I agree, Jen, it, it's that relationship between the Klingons and the Federation it's not an easy relationship. And it's also not easy to become more inclusive as a federation. You know, you kind of, yes. you, you see that gradually happen and it gradually gets better, but it's not just like, hey, we're just, we're just going, we just keep moving and we're, you know, we're just doing it and we're all good. No, there, there's skirmishes and there's fights and there's, you know, issues going on. And yes, with that whole Klingon, federation um kind of relationship you see that whole dynamic relating and you know being you know being in a relationship is hard <laughs> it's gonna have some days where it's gonna be like okay we're buddies today and then it's gonna have some times where it's like okay we are fighting today <laughs> right we're, yeah yeah it, it, it's not but um you know Stacy said something that kind of struck me as well and I hadn't thought about it until she said it. Yeah, the Vulcans, they do have that kind of air of, yeah, we're we're beyond reproach. We're all whatever. But if you think about it, the Vulcans basically meditate half of their, their own personalities away, right? Mm -hmm. You know, right. it's it, it's like they are repressed <laughs> so they can act like they're better than everybody else. Whereas exactly. the Kling... <laughs> Whereas the Klingons, they are true to themselves. They are all, they do everything that they want to do. They are true to who they are. And they've always stuck with that. Whereas the Vulcans have a lifetime of repressing themselves to try to appear. Yeah, we're better than y'all. Oh, but they didn't get the Romulans. And you're like, oh. <laughs> right, the Romulans are just like, we're better than y'all. Forget y'all. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they're like, we show all the emotion and we're devious. Right. <laughs> we can manipulate the whatever out of all of y'all, you know, and that's why we're better. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's hilarious. It's hilarious. We, we have talked so much about this show, y'all. And, and I'm, I'm not going to lie. We talked for a whole hour before we even started recording. <laughs> That's how much stuff is in this show. There are a there are a couple of things that for some reason I wanted to mention a couple of little Easter egg things that had me giddy. Um well in and two not just had me giddy but had me actually going and getting excited about TOS. So I'm just going to say blanket in season 1 and in season 2 because in season 2 they go to Talos 4. And there's a flashback there to an episode I had not seen from TOS, but it actually kind of gets me excited to see TOS, right? Because it's mm -hmm. like, I want to know, you know, what, what went on? Are you with talking about the same thing that I'm thinking about that, um, they're trying to get that time crystal? I, yeah, I think that was, that was it. Right. And the, and the woman Vena. And then yes, they had that those. The they, original. That's what I, I haven't watched. I mean, I haven't really watched any, but that is something I do recall because I have seen parts of that episode. And I was like, <gasps> I remember this. <laughs> <Right>. um, <laughs> I'm just like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. It, and, you know, that's, that's one Potter. of those. That's one of those episodes that I hadn't seen. And I was like, I need to go back and look at this. But then, mm -hmm. um, you know, we talked about this earlier. So. You know, I'm just going to kind of reiterate for, for you guys in the audience. We also um, had kind of a flashback in, see, there's a flashback kind of episode in season three with Captain Georgiou and she, she's going back into her parallel universe, but it's actually that whole episode where she's going back into her parallel universe is is actually reminiscent of another TOS episode, which I talked about, you know, with Picard and with the whole xenophobia kind of thing with Picard, where she's going back into this um, into this portal kind of thing, and there's a guardian there, and on TOS they call him the Guardian of Forever, 
And then when she goes back into that portal and she's actually re-entering that, that whole life there, it looks a lot like um, this particular episode where Kirk is a general and it's a very, I'll, pro- I'll say it, it's a very kind of Hitler-esque kind of episode, Hitler-esque kind of episode. You know, there's a lot of violence and stuff going on there, which is also kind of why it made me that episode made me think about um, when I saw in Picard how they did that kind of thing. That that episode kind of carries on, kind of like a Tribble. You can never get rid of a Tribble, doggone it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, but they're so cute. Don't touch them. They'll multiply. <laughs> Some of these Easter eggs from the first two seasons are kind of like TOS Easter eggs. And it's and I like how they kind of put them in there because they're like, you probably aren't a TOS fan <laughs> or you probably just know Spock and you probably just saw The Wrath of Khan, but you probably didn't watch this series. <laughs> so let me give you a little flashback because they do flashbacks here and where it's like, oh my gosh, I get this. You know, they have triple jokes and in season two, they have a joke about being a, a red shirt in season two. <laughs> that's, that's from TOS. The whole thing, the whole uh, thing with Spock to me also made me want to go back and look at Spock because is it me or did, and I know this is probably because they were trying to do this whole, they were trying to integrate Spock and then they were going to spin him off for Strange New Worlds. I get that. And I love that Spock was there. I'm totally with Stacey on the fact that he was nice looking <laughs> especially with that beard. I mean, I thought I liked Zachary Pinto as Spock, but Zachary Quinto as Spock, sorry. Zachary Mm -hmm. Quinto as Spock, but oh. (laughs) Oh gosh. Wow. Anyway, uh, (laughs) to move on from that, um, but the whole kind of relationship between Spock and Michael, that had me actually kind of going back to Spock's character and the fact that she was his sister I'm thinking wasn't this just kind of made up for this show but because didn't Spock have a sister and the sister's name was Amanda I don't know or is Uh, the mother no is the mother mother is Amanda and I think he had a brother in in previous was it is the movie or I thought he had a brother because I do and not a sister sister but in the in the in this show they do mention that he does say because they because they're like what well, you know how they go explain discovery and all this stuff he had a sister and he and they're like when they went they left uh-huh. yeah when they went to the future they said everything is going to be purged my memory you know there will be no right reference or so to my i was like okay that's how they <laughs> Right, so that exactly, so that's how they they disappear her. Yeah, exactly. I knew that had to be. It had to be because there's people like me out there that's thinking. I think Spock had a sister, and Spock's sister was (laughs) named Amanda, not his mother. His mother was named um something that started with oh god. His mother was actually on a TNG episode. Y'all remember that episode with Sarek? where they did the mind mail with Captain Picard. His mother, no, Perrin, Perrin, Perrin. Her name was Perrin. And okay. um, and actually the actors and act, the actor and actress that played uh, Spock's parents in that TNG episode were the same ones that played Spock's parents on TOS. Hmm. Because I have seen that. So the guy who played Sarek on TNG, that's the same guy who played Sarek on TOS. But his mother was named Perrin. And of course she was, you know, human. But for some reason, I feel like, and I don't know where I'm getting this from, that his sister was named Amanda. And here his mom is named Amanda. And I'm just wondering if that's, if they tried to kind of correlate it in case he says, <laughs> I don't know. I have no Maybe, idea. I, have no but- idea. I don't remember a sister. I do remember he had a brother. A brother. So maybe that's what know. I'm thinking, that he had a brother and, and not a sister. But but but, I, yeah. but but that was genius the way they had, you know, kind of explained that away by saying, okay, we're going to purge all of this, you know. Purge all of it because they've gone to the future and we can't now know about the time stuff. And it's like, okay, <laughs> I have no sister named Michael. 
Oh, right, exactly. <laughs> I was like, okay, all right, that that explains this blip. But I, you know, I thought that was, um, I thought that was cool. And, you know, these are just kind of a, just a few, a few little Easter eggs. But a lot of them for, were from the in the first two seasons were from TOS. But as we look at the third season, because they're in the future. And they're actually beyond even Picard, Mm -hmm. you know, they could talk about anything. And I thought it was cool that, you know, in the third season, is that where, is, is that where we meet uh, Michael's mom? No, that's in the second season. Oh, the second season. We we meet her mom, but I think we see her again. No, we don't. Because the third season, yes, she does. We do see her again in the third season we but, do and so yeah because in the third season that's where she's doing a lot of the Kawat Malat stuff that she does uh-huh. I thought that was really cool that they mentioned Kawat Malat because of course right after this right after I watched that I watched Picard and mm-hmm. Elnor is in the Kawat Malat mm-hmm. and I was just like they're bringing in everything now <laughs> that's why they went to the future <laughs> they went to the mm-hmm. future so they could just talk about everything because, you know, they do talk about, uh, they do talk about everything. You know, the reason why Romulans and the Vulcans now are talking or whatever, and mm-hmm. they're trying to figure out the whole burn situation is because Ambassador Spock has re- reunified Vulcan and uh, Romulus. Romulus. Mm-hmm. And he did that in TNG. You know, that was one, that was one of those episodes those two-part episodes in tng that actually it was more than two it was one two-part episode but spock was that was how spock ended up being on tng for a little bit is because he was trying to unite vulcan and romulus because there was a faction of people on romulus that were that were like hey we want to know about our Vulcan cousin, you know, and to mm-hmm. see that kind of come to fruition there is kind of cool. But yeah, so many Easter eggs that we could not possibly even <laughs> go through in, all of them here. But those were just, you know, like a few. And the fact that um, the fact that they went to the future, it actually, to me, because of course, in the beginning, I didn't want to like this because I didn't really have that connection with TOS. But now that they're in the future, we can get Easter eggs from everything that I've seen, right? And mm-hmm. you could feel giddy about, you know, just seeing these little things as they go along. And it's like, oh my gosh, that's from, you know, that's from, you know, TNG. And oh my gosh, that's, and, and the thing about, the thing that's cool here is it's also something that Jan kind of said in the beginning is that this is just, or maybe Stacy, maybe you said it. I can't remember who said it, but this is just Star Trek, right? It, it's just everything. It's the whole story. Whereas Picard is just Picard, right? There's some stuff you're going to have to leave out. Like we were talking about, you know, he doesn't really have that big of a connection with DS9, you know? And so they don't say a lot about DS9 and Picard. They make a couple of little Easter egg mentions here and there. He doesn't have that that big of a connection with DS9, but here in Star Trek Discovery, especially now that they're in the future, we could just talk about anything. <laughs> we can just <laughs> pull all of this in because it really essentially is just, it's just lo- a love of Star Trek. <laughs> It's just a Star Trek love fest here. <laughs> so we've got TOS, we've got, you know, everything from the beginning to, you know, to now at this point, because they're the furthest in the future as far as the timeline goes. You know, because of that, I I, I feel like, I, I think I said with, with uh, Star Trek Picard, I'm giving that five stars, but I'm giving this five stars plus. <laughs> Since I gave that five stars, we need a little, we need a little five star like plus here on that because you just get so much here. There's so much story. There's so much. Jen was saying that there's that there's so much um, you know, production value here. 
Also, one thing that I do want to say about production value, um, this is another reason why it kind of converted me, y'all, and why I got over the fact that they took this off network television, is that we get very adult in, in some of this. Right. There are not a lot of scenes and it's mostly in the language. You know, you're not going to you're not going to hear some of this language nine o'clock at night on CBS because you can't <laughs> can't say some of this stuff, you know, and then there's just there's some, you know, adult scenes here. I think that that makes the story better. y'all. <laughs> you but it's just like it, it's it, it's star trek but it, this is we're not in kitty land anymore we're not in kitty star trek we're not in this is family friendly star trek you know um where and actually you know it's, it's funny because um you know it kind of makes me think of what you were saying stacy about um um or what we were saying about uh the fact that, you know, some of these people are just a straight up hot mess and, and all those kinds of things. And two, we've got a lot going on, you know, with people and their characters going through stuff and doing all this kind of stuff. With that, you kind of need the realness of adult language. You kind of need the realness of people actually in relationships and not just saying, um, you know, I really like you and kissing and then going to commercial. And then the next day they wake up and it's like they're waking up together or they wake up and they're in the same, you know, house or something like that. This is adult Star Trek <laughs> as if it wasn't before, but you know, it, it's, it's definitely not family friendly for everybody kind of thing. And I think that's a little bit of the plus, you know, why it won me over a little bit. Y'all, what do y'all think about that? Or or did that not even enter your minds and I'm just approved? <laughs> I'm I'm gonna disagree with you. You I don't like that. Absolutely. I don't think oh. that there's I don't think that there's anything in there that I wouldn't have I would totally have watched that show with my with my six and eight year old. Absolutely I would have watched it. I can't think of I mean the Yeah, the, I can't really think. Okay, sorry. No, it's okay. The the I just didn't find anything in there that was that was questionable or um the you know, even the language um that they're using, they might use some some curse words here and there, but that but even that, you know, it's not pervasive by any means and it's not um you know, it's it's not um it's not overused by by at all. So I totally would have watched this with my kids. And I I don't have to agree with Jen. I didn't really see anything over the top, really, of it. But I think about if you're comparing it to the earlier episode, not earlier, episode, the earlier um series, you know, those, yeah, it is different. But TV has changed a lot so, since then. Yes. I mean, I do have to say, like, when you said that, oh, yeah, people sleeping together is a lot, like, it's like, oh, yeah, you did really see it now, because I'm thinking about star trek next generation is like you really didn't see that at all in that mm -hmm. so if you compare that to this where you do see people lying in bed with each other you know okay that is different i wouldn't say it was over the top but it is stronger than it was in the next generation but i think when you compare it to what's out there now you know catch the season of riverdale you know you'd be like what yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> you're like yeah this is nowhere near it but it is, I say a lot, in some instances, if you're saying, if you're compared it to the next generation that came out when we were kids, yeah, it is a lot more. But technically speaking, it is not a lot for this day and age of what shows we see out there. Um, yes. So, regularly on so the yeah, I, I, I probably should have made that, that caveat. I was kind of comparing it to what we saw from this franchise in the past. And even with Kirk being, you know, the player. Space whore. Is, yeah. Right, yeah, the space whore. Even with him being the biggest, you know, space <laughs> whore that he is, we didn't actually see a lot. You know, we didn't actually see him, but we knew stuff happens. 
Yeah. We didn't necessarily see stuff. So yes, I, I probably should probably should quantify that and say compared to previous Star Trek, not compared to just TV in general. So no. Yeah. <laughs> no. Compared to previous right. Star Trek, compared- it is a lot. I wouldn't say a lot racy, but it is, you could say it's racier because it yeah, does it's a little bit racy. talk about more about relationships and that, that there are people having sex out there in space, you know, um, yeah, yeah. that are, you know, are touching in space. Well, <laughs> but I mean, I just, but I still think it's not, I still think it's frame friendly because of the fact that even though there is that, I mean, but they are having relationships, relationships, not just a fly by night kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, and and that's yeah. what and that's what I like about it. To me, that's what kind of brings it to that plus, that over the top is that is that they they show everything about the relationship instead of mm-hmm. just showing this kind of idealized version of a yeah. relationship, which is what I love about it. And would I have really understood it in a way that I understand it now when I was, if this was on when I was a kid? Uh, no, but then you kind of think, well, you know, if we show this whole realness about relationships, would we be a little bit better off <laughs> mentally? <laughs> would we have a, a, a little bit less idealized version of, of, you know, what's going on out there and have a real life version of what's going on out there? That is an excellent point. Yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, thinking, kind of thinking about, kind of thinking about where this falls as far as um, rating and as far as uh, did we like this as much as Picard? Did we like this as much as TNG? Or just how did we like this in general? You know, that's kind of where I fall as far as, you know, a rating or whatever. So let's talk about ratings. Like what did you, uh, what did y'all think about Star Trek Discovery? Like if we were rating it, um, if we're giving a Goodreads rating again to remind um, all of y'all out there. The Goodreads ratings, yes, we know it's for books. Uh, essentially, this is a book podcast. <laughs> we just <laughs> go into nerd pop culture every now and then as well. But um, we're going to stick with Goodreads ratings on this. Uh, one star is that we did not like it. Two stars, it was okay. Three stars, we liked it. Four stars, we really liked it. And five stars, it was amazing. So, Jim, uh, what did you think? What's your rate? Five stars. Oh, so Five more, stars. so Absolutely. more than Picard. Yeah. Okay. Um, and well, okay. What I like about Picard is totally different and separate from what I like about um Discovery because well, we've already kind of talked about the fact that that Picard really focuses on Picard, and there's so many things that I love about that show. So I do, I do love it, but it's almost like, it's almost as if Discovery is a, is in a different genre, even though they're both in set in the Star Trek universe, Ah. Um, because because Picard is so much about a personal journey Mm -hmm. and Discovery is really takes us, takes us back to this idea of, of a community, you know, hurling through space and finding and figuring out how to make their way and how to, um, how to solve problems together, how to live together, how to, what impact that they're going to have on uh, literally the universe, which is a really different feeling than you got when you watch Picard. And so I have, I have thoroughly enjoyed the, the depth that they have explored their stories. I love how, how layered each episode is, how, you know, this isn't, this isn't something that has like an A story and a B story. We've got like D story, E story, F story, G story going on. Um, And some of those stories are told in very small um, pieces over the course of multiple episodes. Um, And I just really appreciate the consistency that they have too, in terms of being able to have stories that are layered and complicated, but not forgotten. You know, that they, that, that those, those interesting um, key moments that they have been able to introduce are, um, are, are remembered and they're brought back and they're really part of the world and not just a one episode, you know, one-off kind of thing. So I really appreciate that about it. So that's why it's a four star for me or five star for me, five stars. All right. Five stars. It was amazing. Stacy, what did you think? <clears throat> I really can't remember what I gave Picard. Was that a four I gave it or? I think you gave it a four. Well, this one was, that was definitely a five. I was just like, whatever Picard is, this was one more than that and I do have to say it's really the same kind of reasons that Jen said it was 
Picard, like I said earlier, was Picard to me was more about focused on Picard and his journey. But Star Trek Discovery is to me truly a Star Trek show. And I just really enjoyed this whole, the whole, all season. At times with Picard, I was not saying it was dragging at times, but sometimes I really had to focus to watch it. Where this one, I don't have to really, not saying there's not, what I mean, you don't have to focus. I mean, I don't have to will myself to sit down and watch an episode of Discovery. It was just really, it gave me the good feels of Star Trek The Next Generation. It really did. I, and it, again, it's, it's to me all the same feeling of the, the original Star Trek. They're they're going, I don't say going back, but they're going forward because they're gone to the future and they can now do their own canon and have to worry about messing up anybody else's yeah, timeline. Right, line. exactly. Um, the Klingons but, can look whatever way they want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's why I want to see how have they changed. Have they changed again? Right, exactly. um, it's just, I, I still, I really enjoyed this and it brought me back to how I kind of felt when I first watched um, the next generation. Because after a while, you know, they started doing the next generation, and of which I like the Deep Space Nine, which is a lot, and I like that. But then, like, you know, some of those other stuff that's come out, or I don't wasn't feeling the same way about it. I'm just really was disappointed by Enterprise. I was just, yeah. But I think a lot of this people one made made it back to that original that feeling for me, and the fact that you have that feeling, but you have a cast of characters that are really diverse than has ever been to me exactly for star for star trek i mean really has been i mean you think about all the different characters you know men women all different races all different alien you know backgrounds too as well right um and they get they hit on so many different topics because we you talked about lgbtq plus we talked about what they what was it um the abuse of animals or whatever abuse of animals so we have abuse of animals but also um, the lady who who has the eye thing going on, yes. who reminds me of Joy. But also yes. before that, when we fought, had to think about control and the um the lady that was basically almost a robot in a way, that, but wasn't. You know, they had yes. so much um AI um AI have like yeah. AI on it, but she's well, she's technically it wasn't AI, but it was interface with her. Where did she begin, and then her? Right. And right, all that. Because, uh, because she was human and she, she human. had gotten in an accident and they basically, re- you know, and it's, it's funny that you say that because even though you don't see it because it's all internal, Cisco's dad would always joke about there's so he's, he's had every organ replaced, you know, mm-hmm. and he has artificial everything, but you don't see it because he's human. But here we see somebody that's actually been rebuilt. We see them, you know, we see it from the outside. And Mm -hmm. yeah, that's just cool. And and the fact that they're on the bridge, because that is the other thing, you know, now that you're saying that, the fact that they have this, not just diverse cast, but the diverse, the the diversity is not just a one-off here and there, like they do on, you know, some of the other other episodes, but the the cast on the bridge that you see all the time is 90% human, you know, or mm-hmm. or mostly humanoid looking or mostly human looking, you know. You know, here we have diversity with the uh, with the humanoid characters. We have alien characters in um in uh roles more diverse i should say alien characters in roles it's just it's not as even for it to be star trek where we know they're gonna meet different alien cultures it's really diverse (laughs) and that just brings me and i'm sorry we went off topic supposed to be in and it's but i also think the aliens are diverse too yes sorry about that because the aliens are diverse so i was looking at some of the aliens and how it used to be if they showed you an alien species, all the aliens looked alike, even though yes. they all looked alike, even though they were aliens. But now if you look at the alien species, I was like, on this one episode, that was like, oh, you have, they, they have made the aliens, even though it's a whole different species, the aliens are themselves dispar- are diverse. Yeah, in the way they're looking, it's like mm-hmm. you know, it was like yeah, like exactly. for a while they're the Klingons, basically white actors with the makeup, and then they part, then they're like for a while black actors with the makeup, and then, right, you know, whatever race, and we put makeup on them. Well, now it's like okay, we're gonna have this different alien species. We have different races, and then put the makeup on them, 
and that makes a whole makes mm-hmm. it look like the they're diverse too. Yeah. And so you can see that. And so I'm five. <laughs> 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 like that. So five, everybody. <laughs> five on this. I, I like this. I really did. Oh my gosh. Fives across the board here. So you know what that means, y'all. You know that means we're going to come back and we're going to talk about season four. And if we come back and season five is already done, we're talking about season five. You know that's happening, right? Hey, mm-hmm. I'm there for it. <laughs> Can't wait. All right. We are definitely going to come back and talk about season four, but this wraps it up for seasons one through three of Star Trek Discovery. And hey, y'all, fives across the board. So we hope that if we haven't spoiled it too much for you, and you haven't watched yet, that you do go and watch. If you've watched season three and you're ready for season four, or if you've caught up and you want to talk about it, nerdyromanticspodcast.com. There is a contact section. You can talk all about it. Send me an email. But if you want to be caught up and you want to be here when we do talk about season four, then make sure that you are subscribed to our podcast and subscribe to our newsletter, which you can also do at nerdyromanticspodcast.com backslash subscribe. Jen, Stacy, I am so happy that y'all came on to talk about this show with me. Um, I, I, and I cannot wait to talk about season four with y'all. Thank you for coming on and thank you for indulging me in all of this. Thank you for hosting, hun. This has been awesome. It's always a pleasure. Do appreciate it. Being invited. So that's all for this episode. We've got a new website at nerdyromanticspodcast.com. But don't fear, all of our episodes and their show notes are on our new website. While you're there, please consider donating to our podcast with the donate button at the top right hand corner or the buy me a coffee button on the show notes for each episode. Your donations go straight to keeping this podcast on the air and keeping all of our episodes out there for you to listen to whenever you want to. If you want to get our show notes in your inbox, please consider signing up for our Nerdy Romantics newsletter. The sign-up form is at the bottom of each page on our new website. Thank you for listening.